Hello, today we're going to talk about the best way to measure power in a reef tank, flow or no flow. Hello and welcome back everyone to Amir Azul TV. Alright, got a quick video for you. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago I did a par map of uh, my tank uh, showing you what uh, par levels I'm getting on my uh, SPS collection and uh, uh, I usually when I when I uh, do my uh, par reading I uh, use my Sunai par meter I typically turn off the display uh, power heads but I keep the return on and I have the lid off and that's the, the usual way that I uh, measure my uh, par. So after uh, I published the video, I, I had a nice long exchange with uh, Sant Nova, one of my subscribers, about how I measure par and, and whether it matters to have the flow on or off. Uh, so uh, uh, he made some arguments that uh, the flow might actually affect uh, the par levels. And so obviously when, when you have flow, the water on the top of the tank is going to be focusing and unfocusing the light on uh, any specific point. So you might expect uh, some sometimes uh, just by the nature of uh, the water flow you might have more intense par over uh, an SPS and then uh, when the wave sh kind of shifts you might have less light uh, but I thought that process would essentially just average itself out such that if you measure par with the flow on you're getting the right average uh, versus if you uh, measure par without the flow uh, so uh, after some conversation, uh, Sandova suggested that I actually uh, do this experiment. Uh, so I thought that was a great idea. So th thanks, man, for uh, suggesting this. And I'll actually show you the results of uh, measuring par over the same area of my tank uh, using different settings and, and see whether it's actually going to make a difference in terms of uh, the values that I get and the spread of par over time. So I went ahead and I got my uh, trusty PAR meter and the first experiment was going to be with full flow in the tank and with my lid on. So I always have a lid, uh, I think it's a great idea, you don't want to lose any fish. And I wedged my PAR meter uh, using this 3D printer ad uh, printed adapter into this cranny in my tank and like I'm, I'm always going to find the spot really easily so all the measurements are done over that one spot. And I essentially, I, I just recorded the readings that I got from the PAR meter over a 30 second interval. I went back and I did like a frame by frame and I figured out all the values and I wrote them down in Excel and I was able to get the average PAR. So the average bar with the lid on is 247 and the standard deviation is 15.29 PAR. So that means there is a, the, the most of the time the values are within 15 uh, uh, units of the average. The second test was me removing the lid and still keeping all of the flow in the tank. So uh, my gyres, my uh, MP10s and my return were all on. Uh, and again, same process. I, I wedged it in that one spot and I recorded the values over a 30 uh, second interval. I did a playback. I wrote all the numbers by hand, put them in Excel and I did some uh, quick calculations. So by removing the par and keeping the flow on, uh, sorry, removing the lid and keeping the flow on, my par increased to 281. And the standard deviation around this is about the same, about 18.27. Uh, so that means on average, my, uh, that spot is getting 280 uh, plus or minus uh, 18 uh, uh, units of par. Uh, the third trial was with me turning down all in display flow, so no MP10s, no gyres, uh, but I still had my return on. That's typically what I do when I'm measuring par in my tank. Uh, the return is on, uh, but the, the uh, flow in the display is off. Again, same spot, and I watched the measurements over uh, 30 seconds, recorded them down, and you see that I'm actually getting like almost the same, uh, probably like not statistically uh, different, uh, re average readings of par, so about 280. Uh, but you notice right away that the standard deviation around the mean is a lot smaller. So uh, we went from about uh, 18 or 15 uh, standard deviation to 4. So average the same, but the spread is a lot narrower. And then finally, I did the test with uh, no flow whatsoever in the tank. So the return was off, all the, uh, the power heads inside the display were off. Uh, and again, I went to that specific uh, nook in uh, my rock work, 
uh, that's where I wedged my uh, uh, Sunai PAR meter and just like all the other trials I went ahead and I looked uh, at the recorded uh, 30 second uh, clip and re uh, took note of the values of PAR uh, over time wrote them down and the average still about 280 and the standard deviation decline even uh, lower so it's uh, now one <laughs> so it's really really tiny you could see that the, the numbers are really not moving from around like 81 82 so uh, to put it all together I, I went and I uh, uh, to, uh, recorded this data and, and I did this uh, bar graph so here what you're looking at is the par value for the first trial uh, lid with full flow second trial no lid and full flow third trial no lid with just a return and the fourth trial which is no lid and uh, no flow whatsoever so return is off and you could see right away that uh, uh, obviously uh, if you're if you add the lid then it's going to reduce the actual par that your tank experiencing because the lid is uh, uh, scattering some of the light from your uh, uh, from your uh, well from your lights <laughs> uh, from uh, uh, in my case the Radeon's uh, uh, Gen 5 uh, blues uh, and then the other interesting thing which kind of supports my conclusion that, that it doesn't really like if you're if you're only interested in average then it doesn't really matter whether you have flow or no flow when you're measuring uh, par because you could see trial two three and four they all essentially have the same mean around 280 but obviously if you have full flow going then then the, your actual uh, fragment your SPS your frags are gonna experience uh, uh, the average but they're also gonna experience some extremes in par so when when the when the light the light can focus so in our example the light can focus uh, uh, sorry, the, the waves can focus the light and create uh, sometimes uh, some instances where the frag is getting like 320 but could also the, the waves can diffuse the light and create like uh, 240 par but on average a frag is getting 280. You could see if we remove the flow then uh, the average the standard deviation declines. Uh, I'll say that uh, these whiskers on, on the box plots here represent the, the standard the upper and lower band of the standard deviation. So uh, what what can you take of this? All right. So for me, is obviously uh, the the it, to me it's not it doesn't really matter whether you have flow or, or no flow. You're if you're still getting kind of the average par. So uh, uh, actually looking at this, it, it might actually be a lot easier to measure with no flow because you don't have to stay over one spot that much to get a sense of what the average is. Uh, yeah. So in in the case of no flow. Uh, all you had to do is just look at the, the readings for a couple of uh, seconds and you realize that they're not moving. Uh, the other thing that I actually like neglected when whenever I did my estimation of PAR is I measured uh, PAR with the lid off but you could see clearly that uh, having adding the lid uh, reduces uh, my PAR by about uh, 12 to 15 percent. Uh, so that's something that I have to kind of uh, make note of when, when whenever I'm, measure, I'm measuring PAR with no lid that my actual values are gonna be about 12 to 15% lower once I add the lid. All right, that's it everybody. Uh, I'm glad I did this experiment and I'm happy kind of uh, confirmed my uh, hypothesis that uh, the surface disruption is only gonna add variation, uh, but the average par, uh, if you had measured the par with no flow, you're still gonna get the same average as if you measured it, you've measured it with flow. Okay, everybody, I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this and uh, see you around. Have a good one.